I think we are so taught to think that things are just like the way that they're supposed to be in the US. And when you go to other countries, you realize like how much more expansive life could be and how much better life can be. And you it really puts things into perspective. One more Rolling With Tay podcast? Well, follow on Instagram and Twitter at Rolling With Tay. Visit the blog rollingwithtay.wordpress.com for more content and be sure to sign up for the monthly newsletter. And lastly, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Rolling With Tay. This is the Rolling With Tay podcast. I'm your host, Tasia, a.k.a. Tay, and this is episode six. And my guest today is Tasia. No, I'm not talking about myself. (laughs) I'm talking about Tasia Hawkins, also known as Tasia.Ebony on Instagram. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, you have a great name, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. I know. And the spelling, perfect. Flawless name we got going on. Uh, thanks again for being a guest. Um, how are you feeling today? Of course. I'm good. I am so good today. It's beautiful in New York City right now. We're having like an actual spring day. So I went for a long walk. I got some slutty vegan, which is oh. so great. So it's good. Today's good. Nice, nice. Oh, wait, do... Are, are they in Harlem or are they still in, I know they have a spot in Brooklyn. Did you go to yes, Brooklyn? Yes, they, no, they are in Harlem. Whoa. This was not like a paid advertisement for Slutty <laughs> Vegan, but Slutty Vegan is in Harlem. They opened last month, I think, and they're just so hype. It's such a fun vibe. You should definitely go. All right, yeah. I'm gonna check it out. I'm not a vegan, but I've heard it's really good, so. It's also not necessarily made for vegan people. Oh, it's just okay. fun. Like, it, it honestly tastes like regular like fast food food to me Mm -hmm. um but it's good it's fun you gotta go for the experience okay I will I gotta go I gotta go (laughs) you gotta go (laughs) wait was it a line was it a whole bunch there wasn't it was a couple people but it wasn't crazy okay definitely go it's a nice little walk it's by the park like it's it's cool all right you sold me I'm going I'm gonna check it out (laughs) yes I've been waiting for a long time to get slutty vegan so I'm glad I finally went but yes it's so good. Yeah, I've heard about it and I saw like Instagram posts and lines and I was like, mm. <laughs> and it's in Brooklyn. I was like, mm. <laughs> yeah, no, but we're here now. <laughs> we're in Ireland. It's uptown. Okay. <laughs> um, Tasia is also a member of Black Girls Do Bike NYC and we met first via Strava and then we met randomly last Father's Day at the Skyscraper Classic in Harlem. Yes. And that was, like, you looked, I saw you, I was like, oh, she looks familiar, but I don't know, you know. And then when you said your name, I was like, I know you, oh, Strava, my name is also Tay. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) That's exactly what happened. I remember, like, seeing your name on Strava, probably from being in the same cycling group, and I was like, oh, I have to meet her. (laughs) And so I remembered your face so that whenever, you know, we were at the event, I'm like, I'm going to find this person. (laughs) Because it's not that common that you find someone named Tasia. Right. And like you said, spelled the same way. And exactly. just Tasia. Like I've met other, they'll be like, yeah, my name's Tasia. And I'm like, oh, your name, no, actually it's Fantasia. I'm like, oh, okay. but your name is just Tasia. Yes. Um, does your family or friends call you Tay for short? Yes. When I was, not so much anymore, but when I was a kid, I was mm-hmm. called Tay a lot. But I think my parents, some family members call me that, but not as common anymore. Yeah. Did yeah. you have the same nickname? Yes, yeah, yeah, Tay. <laughs> You're rolling with Tay. Oh, yeah. that's true. That's true. <laughs> you still use it. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Um, yeah, most of my friends and uh family called me Tay. Now it's you know, still Tasia, but you know, now and again they'll call me Tay. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. What a world. <laughs> oh, all right. So let's know a little bit more about Tasia. Yes. 
So me also, sorry if y'all hear my dog barking in the background. That's one of the things to know. I have a dog. He's very cute, but sometimes he has a little bit of separation anxiety. Um, but yeah, I, I grew up in New York. Um, I, I do so many things. I teach indoor cycling. I'm trying to cycle outdoors. I'm trying to become a triathlete this year. So that's one of, one of the many things. Hey, nice. what, we can talk about that later, but that's not what we're here for. Um, I love to travel. Traveling is one of my favorite things. Um, outside of all of that, I do social impact work, helping nonprofits and companies like really do good things with their money and resources. Mm. So I love to do that too. Um, yeah, that's me. I also um, do a lot of wellness work and run retreats and trips for women of color. So all of the exciting things which you can follow me after this on. But um, yeah, I'm just excited to be here. <sighs> Nice, nice. Um, we were speaking before we started recording, and after we became friends on Instagram, I was like, Oh, let me check out what Tasia's doing. And all this travel stuff popped up, and I was like, What the hell? <laughs> what? <laughs> I was like, Okay. And then I messaged her, I was like, Listen, um, I have this podcast, I would love for you to be on it because you've done all the things like you've been all the places <laughs> I try I haven't, I've been to a fraction of the places but I I try to be like you know well-rounded get all the fun experiences in um and I feel like the same I'm like you do like roller skating marathons <laughs> like, and I, I got roller skates last summer I was like maybe I can do <laughs> some skating um, but yeah, I, I've been traveling. I started traveling when I was probably around 17 or so. Mm -hmm. um, and I had this goal to go to 25 countries by my 25th birthday. And so I, I traveled pretty aggressively for a while. And now I've kind of cooled off and like didn't travel during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. But I've been on some cool experiences. Nice. Okay, so then what sparked that, that interest in traveling at such a young age? I think for me, it was like just a way to experience new things and see the world. I think I, um, I feel like, I feel like everyone talks about like their high school teacher, but if anyone who knew me in high school, like is listening to this, we had this great teacher. I should send her this episode after this, but um, <laughs> I took this gastronomy class where we would go um, eat all these different cuisines. We would like learn about traveling a lot. I think that was maybe one of the first things that kind of exposed my mind to like all of the things that um that you could experience around the world and like yes being in New York City um growing up here you get exposed to so much but I really wanted to be able to see more things I didn't want to feel like my world was small and so yeah I was just excited to like go go try stuff go see things um if you're into astrology, I'm a Sagittarius. So people are always like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> I'm like, nah, I don't know all of the astrology things, but people are like, oh, you're like such a Sagittarius. But um, yeah, I just love, it's it's one of the things that makes me feel like excited and free and um, like you're actually getting an experience what the world has to offer. So I just, I love it for all those reasons. Nice. Um, what countries have you been to? Um, I've been to a lot. I've been, I, I pulled up my list right before this because I'm like, I don't even remember. Um, I've been to 27 countries. Ooh. Um, so it's been, I've been to every continent except Antarctica. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's been a mix of stuff. I would say like my fate or most recently, my recent new country, I went to UAE. So I went to Dubai, which was amazing in the fall. Um, in Portugal was my... Portugal and then Mexico, where I spent a lot of my winter this year, have been my most recent. But uh, my first couple trips were like typical. I went to Jamaica. I went to the Bahamas. Um, and then it was really when I was, um, I studied abroad in college. And when mm. I studied abroad, I studied abroad for a year. And so I got to visit a lot more places in that year that I studied abroad. Nice. Where did you study abroad? I did a fall semester in Spain in Salamanca, which is a city that's three hours to the west of Madrid. It's kind of close to the border of Portugal. And then in the spring, I studied abroad in Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. So I was in San Jose, which is the capital of Costa Rica, which is not where most people spend time. If you're going to Costa Rica, like, let me know. I'm happy to give you recommendations. But I got to travel. Like, it was when I was in Spain, I got to travel all throughout Europe. So 
went to a lot of like went to France and Italy um also spent a weekend in Portugal while I was there traveled a bit around Spain and then when I was studying abroad in Costa Rica I also went to Panama and went Mm. to Peru um Mm. and a lot of the weekends you would go visit different places around Costa Rica too oh nice yeah I've been to Costa Rica I like it a lot um I do want to go back and go to um different parts yes where did you go in Costa Rica um mm, okay I flew into Liberia airport Mm -hmm. so whatever is in that area Mm -hmm. (laughs) I stayed I stayed there so I didn't get a chance to go to um the capital um, it's you weren't missing much it's okay <laughs> I'm say it's not one of those like capital cities that you need to see I think Costa Rica is like really when you think about like a, a vacation to Costa Rica it's really like those the areas on the coast so I'm yeah sure you got a great experience yeah and I got a chance to go to Nicaragua while I was there as well oh amazing I have not been to Nicaragua mm-hmm. very cool um Damn, I just forgot what I was gonna ask you. Oh, okay. What was your what is what is your favorite country and why? I could not pick one favorite country. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely couldn't pick one favorite. Um, I think if I were to pick, I'm like, how would I even phrase that? I think I've had a couple of favorite trips, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say one of my favorite trips was to Ghana. Mm. Um, in 2019, I did a trip. It was like all black folks. Like we it was, it was during the year of return. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, or was it maybe it was the year after? I don't remember. But it was one of those like return home trips, and it was just so beautiful. Um, I really, really loved getting to experience West Africa. I think it's something that like every black person should experience. Mm-hmm. Um, so that trip was amazing. And on that same trip. I also went to Kenya and Mm. spent like two days in Nairobi and I loved Nairobi. Um, Nairobi is just an amazing city, had amazing food. Um, I was with my mom and we had a guide for the time that we were there and Mm. she just showed us like all all the amazing stuff that I loved. Um, So I loved that Ghana and Kenya trip. I think the other, my other mention, and and these aren't necessarily my favorites. I I don't want to say favorites, (laughs) but like... (laughs) that was an amazing trip and then I have to give Mexico like such a shout out because one like people are playing games on Mexico's name right now (laughs) and I don't like it um I have been spending a lot of time in Mexico so I just spent two months in Mexico this year last year also spent almost a month in Mexico um I've return to Mexico a lot, especially to Playa del Carmen. Mm -hmm. Um, I love the Riviera Maya. That's where I'm hosting a retreat in next February. Um, It is so, I mean, there's so much that Mexico has to offer. And I think it's just sad, the negative stereotypes that have been built up around Mexico. Um, But I love especially that region because it's so it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, I, it's a place that I've been able to find so much community, especially in Playa del Carmen, like the black community there is so, so big, um, and so nurturing and so welcoming. Um, and just been able to find like such a great, such a great crew of people, um, there, like people who are local, people who have moved there. Um, so yeah, I just I love being in Mexico. <laughs> um, so that that's my other honorable mention, which I have to give a <laughs> shout out because I had spent literally two months <laughs> of this year so far living there. Um, I've been to Mexico. I've I, like yeah, only one time, and I was in uh, Playa del Carmo. Playa del Carmo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Playa del Carmen. There you, you go. Know. Yep, there you go. I was there, and I had such a good time. Um, going uh, my friend and I was supposed to go to Haiti then they had a riot so we had to switch our trip and we ended up going to Mexico had a great time um yeah so I mean I didn't spend a, two months out there but <laughs> but still <laughs> I had a I had a really good time it's dope any length of time in Playa I think is great and it's such a walkable town too like you can get such a mix. yes Mm -hmm. of experiences um it has been overdeveloped a lot like I first went there in 2015 so 2015 versus when I was there this January completely different looking place um a lot of gentrification and so there's like things to be aware of with that but 
um, there is, it is like such a good, especially if you're like new to travel too, I really recommend that area. I know that there's a lot of like new stories and stuff, but it is, it does feel safe um, mm-hmm. for me. I've never felt unsafe. I, I say this all the time. Like people, I think are scared of feeling unsafe when traveling, but I have always felt the most unsafe in the United States. Mm. So it is what you make, what you make it for sure. But I'm glad you had a good time in Mexico too. Yeah, I walked all over. And and I did see them as I was walking around, see them building up. So I can imagine how it looks now. I went in 2018. Mm-hmm. So. It is, it's kind of wild. There's a <laughs> lot of condo buildings, but yeah, it's, it's rough. Um, it's rough how like the, the balance of trying to be responsible and how you travel. So I think also about like, where am I staying? How am I supporting locals? How am mm-hmm. I making sure that I'm not just, you know, lining the pockets of Airbnbs or whatever, um, or people who, you know, are not from there and are buying Airbnbs. That kind of stuff is like helpful to be mindful of, especially when you're traveling to certain destinations. But mm-hmm. yeah, we, we th- try to be like as considerate as possible, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, I feel you. Do you normally travel in a group or travel solo? Do a little bit of both? What do you prefer? I do a little bit of both. So I will say, I think I think the solo travel movement is beautiful. I'm I love like women being excited and like going out and traveling solo. I think at this point, it is not my thing. Mm. <laughs> I think that when I was younger, I would go wherever because I was like, so on a mission. I was like, look, I'm going to all these countries. I'm going to go on all these trips. And I think also when I was younger, like all of my friends were not prioritizing travel in the same way that I was. So it was mm. harder to find people to travel with. Mm-hmm. I think now that I'm a bit older, it's easier to find people to travel with. Um and so I just prefer to do it that way. I think if I'm, if I really want to do something or if it's a certain kind of trip, like for me with this two months in Mexico, I was solo a lot of that mm-hmm. time, but I've also learned how to meet people. Like I'm in so many travel groups, so many WhatsApp groups. There's also in Mexico city, like I had people come down to visit me. So I wasn't necessarily alone the entire mm-hmm. time. Um, but I've been able to find that balance where I doesn't feel like I'm just solo. Um, so I really like that in terms of like getting to meet people who actually live there versus like, if you want to trip with your friends, you're usually not meeting, like you're not getting the full experience necessarily. Um, so I do like traveling more slowly, spending more time in a place, like really getting to know people, which I think happens more when you do a solo trip. Mm-hmm. I like those pieces of it, but I also love the, comfort of being around people and being able to make those memories together and being able to like talk about the trip after that kind of stuff so for me I'm like now I'm leaning more towards group travel um group travel is a little bit easier now that just my circle of people has changed and there's more people who want to travel together um so that's been a little bit different but I like always say, you know, do what works for you. Cause if you want to travel and you're not finding the people or like the trip never makes it out the group chat, like make your trip happen for yourself and just find people along the way. No, you're absolutely right. Because you mentioned like Facebook and <clears throat> excuse me, you mentioned Facebook and uh, WhatsApp groups. There are so many groups of people, even Twitter. I'm a part of this solo travel group. Oh, cool. And, and, there are people, yeah, they're solo traveling, but hey, um, are you going to this place? I'll meet up with you. So like you said, even if you don't feel comfortable traveling by yourself, they're with, you know, if say anybody, you know, your friend group, they don't want to go. These Facebook groups, these um, Twitter groups, there are spaces where there are people looking for other people to to go with or meet up with and, you know, most of the, I mean, you would vet them, you know, like, <laughs> but, yeah, but, but, still. but, but at least you know that, okay, you may not room with this person, but you know, this person is going around this time. All right, cool. Maybe we can meet up. Then you have a friend and you're not, like you said, solo the whole time. Right. So, yeah. It's so real. And it's not that hard to find that. Like when you start to look at, especially countries where 
there is a big community of people mm -hmm. either it doesn't not even necessarily foreigners but like you can find really good groups mm -hmm. um like I'm in a black girl magic Mexico group that's so good um so once you find those it makes it a lot easy a lot easier and there's so many people who are going to support you mm -hmm. and so I think just not feeling like oh if I take a solo trip I'm going to be like in the house by myself because I have no one to go out with um and I would say also if you haven't traveled a lot and you want to take a solo trip to try to find those plate go to those places where that community does exist mm -hmm. um where there is that bigger expat community like Mexico you'll always be able to find people there's a really big expat community. And I don't like the term expat, but I'm using it for the sake of it <laughs> um, because that's what those groups label themselves. But yeah. that's a whole nother topic. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Portugal is another great place for that. Bali is a great place for that. So just think about where you're going. If you're going to some far flung place, like Sure, it might be harder to find community, but if you want to start to travel and you want to solo travel, there's places that are a little bit easier than others. Yeah, definitely. Um, what do you enjoy most about traveling? What do I enjoy most? That's a good question. I, the biggest thing that I take away from traveling is remembering that the U.S. is really ghetto. <laughs> I think that we are, I don't want to, I think this is like a pretty, legit generalization <laughs> i think in the u.s we're raised to think that the u.s does everything well mm -hmm. um or is this like wealthy developed country whatever and i think a lot of us at least who are like in certain circles you know realize that that is not the case mm -hmm. but i think we are so taught to think that things are just like the way that they're supposed to be in the U.S. And when you go to other countries, you realize like how much more expansive life could be and how much better life can be. And you, it really puts things into perspective. Like in Mexico, for example, like I love how like community focus it is like things like different cultures have so many better ways of living mm -hmm. frankly um or like when you look at so many of the countries in western europe and like the level of their social safety nets is wild compared to ours and so i think it really puts into perspective i think it's really helped me to think about like what i actually want my life to be like mm -hmm. um or like we hear these stories of like oh these other places are so unsafe and whatever yep. but like when I travel, I realize actually the U.S. is the most unsafe I've ever felt. And like, I've never, like when I studied abroad in Spain, we would stay out until four o'clock in the morning. Like we never felt, <laughs> never felt unsafe. And that's not something I've been able to feel in the mm. U.S. And so I think getting to experience like what life can actually be and to be able to take away these different cultures and perspectives around community or like just discovering like something new to eat that you love or like getting to build relationships with new people. And I think because of the way I've been traveling more recently, like I've been really intentional about where I go and the type of people that I'm around. So I've been in these circles around people who are living their lives really differently because I'm in these communities of like, or I've, I've tried to spend more time meeting people who decided to leave the U.S. and live somewhere else. So I'm meeting people where I'm like, oh, this is possible. Like we're actually able to create the lives that we want and they don't have to be centered in the U.S. And like, oh wait, it's actually like, life is so much better <laughs> in other places and I don't have to do any of these things. And so I think you just meet people who are living differently that just expand your mindset of what your life can be. Mm -hmm. So next question is, are you moving abroad <laughs> is that what you're saying um, I'm, right now I'm not planning to I don't know I mean I'm really open to that I, I honestly am I don't know I don't know if I would mm -hmm. um my plan right now is to basically live abroad in the winter because I don't I don't like I just don't want to do winter time mm -hmm. that was another thing that I realized like winter time is optional mm. And there's all these places that don't experience the winter or at least don't experience winter at the same time that we do in the United States. So that's part of my vibe right now, just not experiencing the winter time. 
Um, but I also love New York. I'm so attached to New York, honestly. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I don't know if I had a compelling reason to move abroad, then maybe I would, um, which just hasn't happened yet, but I'm open to it. Like it could be, it could be a thing in the future. Okay. I can see that. And I, I can see it for I, me. I can, I, can, I can see it for you. Would you <laughs> ever move abroad? Like, have you thought about it? Mm-mm. No, I haven't thought about it. Nope. Are you I like, mean, is, is it a hard no? Or is it like, uh-huh, I don't know. It's a, uh-huh, I don't know. It's, it's not a hard no. <laughs> it's like, uh-huh, okay, let me find a place that I, like, I can see myself staying, you know? So mm-hmm. I got to do a little bit more travel. Yeah, when you travel, it's like you start to see the places that you like and don't like. I think I know what I'd be looking for. I do feel like if I were to if I were to pick a place to move abroad right now, it would probably be Playa del Carmen in Mexico. Because mm-hmm. um, I just haven't been to another place that meets all of my requirements in that way. Um, but I'm also like not. I'm like, yeah, I could spend my winters there and be in New York for the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. I wrote that down. Winter time is optional. I like that. Yes. Like, <laughs> we should think that out. And that's the thing, too. Like, all of this stuff is optional. All, all of these, like, places that we live, these things that we do, I think that's what traveling gives you. Like, you're like, oh, this does not work this way in other countries at all. It does not need to operate in the way that we have been taught to operate in the U.S. No, you're so right. You're so right. When I go to, shucks, when I go to other states, not the same, but, like, I'm going to be honest, today I was on my bike, just riding around, and I said to myself, New York is so ghetto. Like, I love New York. I love New York, you know, the Bronx, everything, but I was just like, what the hell? <laughs> like, I was in L.A. for two months working, and I just saw the difference in how they keep the streets, there's no mm-hmm. trash, <laughs> it's like, and I come back here, and I'm just like... What the hell, guys? We got it. We got to get it together. We, yes. <laughs> we got to get it together. <laughs> yes, it's so crazy. I felt the same when I was in Mexico City. Like, I heard all these terrible things about Mexico. Or not, when you hear the news, you hear these terrible things about Mexico, right? But when it comes mm-hmm. to Mexico City, everyone I know who's visited has said all of these amazing things about it. But you also hear like, oh, it's so dangerous and Mexico's crazy and whatever. Mexico City is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Like, at least the parts that you're in, like, as a tourist, I'm not going to speak for all of Mexico City, but there's, like, lavender growing in the sidewalks. (laughs) There's not a speck of garbage anywhere. It's so nice. Like, it feels like you're walking in, like, a fairy tale garden. Like, and I'm like, it's crazy (laughs) that... I can barely walk a block in New York City without seeing a rat. Like, and this is this is what we call like an ideal beautiful city. Or I don't know if people call it New York beautiful, but we're putting New York on this tier and saying all these bad things about Mexico City. And Mexico City is so much cleaner yeah. and nicer. <laughs> Wild. Oh man, we got to get together. <laughs> it's wild so yeah I think it's just like that perspective shift like yeah. that has what's what travel has really given me like just expanded my mind to be just way more open-minded about everything mm-hmm. what is on your bucket list what places Bali has been on my list for the longest I'm so mad because I was supposed to go in 2020 on this beautiful three-week trip. It was supposed to be like just a personal like retreat trip. I was going to spend a couple of days in this silent, which is a little scary now, but it's like this (laughs) silent retreat where you're just like in these beautiful rice fields of Bali, but you're just like meditating basically. Um, And was going to get one of those little private villas with a pool, all Mm. of those things. That 2020 trip did not happen and I have not made it happen yet. So that one is high on my list. Um, still want to go to Brazil and I still want to go to South Africa. Those are the, the main ones that I've been like wanting to go to for the longest and haven't made it to yet. Mm-hmm. I have been to South Africa. I've been to Johannesburg. Had a great time. Um, went to my went for my cousin's birthday. Nice. I had such a good time. I bungee jumped. Nice. You know, I was bungee jumping. Ah, shit. I mean, <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> I was scared. Listen, I was, I was up 
that night looking on YouTube and like just searching the internet, then watching uh, bungee jumping videos and then like typing in the search, how not to be scared when you're mm-hmm. bungee jumping. <laughs> but I was like, F it, I'm in Johannesburg. I volunteered to go first. What was I thinking? The Whoa. whole way up, I was like, man, what am I doing? <laughs> But it was great. I, I'm so glad I did it. Um, I don't know if I will do it again. But that's real. Maybe, maybe, maybe if I go someplace else and they're like, oh, you want to bungee jump off a, you know, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> You're open to it. That's what matters. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I would. I did one thing that was like a Tarzan swing and that was enough for me. I don't, need to jump off <laughs> I don't like that feeling. But yeah, I'm glad you went to Joburg. I've heard, well, I've actually heard mixed things about South Africa because mm-hmm. it's like beautiful. I've heard it's great. And then I've also heard like jarring levels of racism and like yeah. it feels a little bit like taking a step back in time in some ways. So mm-hmm. I've heard all the things. Yeah, I heard that too. And that I was kind of like, mm, don't want to go, but definitely wanted to celebrate my cousin's birthday. Johannesburg was great. I didn't, you know, nothing I didn't any feel any type of racism or anything um but then they went to Cape Town but they said they had a beautiful time um I don't think they anything happened there but I was like I was good off of Cape Town (laughs) I was good I was good off of Cape Town yeah I've heard that comment a lot more about Cape Town also than Joburg (laughs) I was like okay I'm I'll miss that leg of the trip. I'm fine. That's fair. Yeah, I think when I go, I'll do both and and get my own opinion about yeah. it. But yeah, it's still like it's still a place I think people should go to. It's just like being mindful. Yes, of all yes. that. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So, w- what trips do you have coming up? What trips do I have coming up? So, I'm going on a cruise tomorrow. <laughs> Mentioned that mm-hmm. I have a ten day cruise to the Caribbean, which mm. this will be my second cruise. It's for my aunt's birthday, so nice. it'll be a fun family cruise. And then, what do I have after that? I'm my retreat. That's the only thing that I have planned. So, I am starting to host wellness retreats for women of color. And my next one is in February of 2024 in Acumal, Mexico, which is in between Tulum and Playa del Carmen. So in the region, I was just saying that I love so much. Mm -hmm. Um, So that I have planned um, and spots are open if people are interested in signing up. And yeah, besides that, I'm like, this year is kind of open. I think because I spent the first two months (laughs) traveling (laughs) and I'm also about to go on another trip right now. The second half of my year is like gonna be kind of chill I might um I might also go to Mexico just to like pre-scout some stuff and Mm. just because I feel like going um but otherwise I'm kind of chilling this year and that's just for now like if I find a good flight deal or something maybe I'll end up somewhere but now it's like Mexico is my thing at the moment and now the Caribbean so some very typical trips I got going on nothing crazy oh that's what's up that is what's up. Yeah. Do you have anything planned? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, I didn't really. No, I didn't go anywhere. Um, yeah, I didn't. I didn't travel abroad last year. This year, um, well, let me back up. I've been to forty nine states. So whoa, I have one state left to go, and that's Alaska. So hopefully, I'll be doing that this year. Nice. Um, and I am going to, um, Berlin. I loved Berlin. For an inline (laughs) skate marathon, so. Whoa! See, like, you do really (laughs) dope stuff. Like, a skate marathon in Berlin? Like, how cool is that? Yeah, Um, when I I found out about it, shout out to Simone and Mike for telling me about it. I was like, okay, because it's, it's the day before the runner's marathon. So it's the BMW um, Berlin in, um, BMW Berlin um, marathon. And the Saturday before um, the, the runner's marathon, they have an inline skate marathon and I'm a participate in that. That so. is 
so dope. I'm also, okay, this is like kind of also a side topic, but I'm also so amazed at all the travel that people do for races. Yes. And like getting to see all, like to, to race in different places. Like that's something that I'm so interested in as I'm like starting to race. Um, but that's so dope. Are you doing a skate marathon in Berlin? Like what? I know, right? <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> yeah, I um I have not done anything that cool yet. Um, <laughs> but I did I did a loop around Cozumel, um, mm. the island of Cozumel when I was in Playa del Carmen, like cycling. Mm-hmm. And Cozumel, they do an Iron Man on, and I'm I do not intend to ever do an Iron Man, but it was so cool to do that route. And they do a couple. There's a couple cycling races that happen on the island, but it's this beautiful 40 mile loop. Um, and it's just like, I cannot describe how beautiful this mm. ride was. And doing that ride also made me think about like, wow, I should do more travel where I just am like cycling or mm-hmm. running or whatever, because there's so many beautiful or just like really fun routes in the world when it comes to races. Yeah, definitely are. It definitely are. Um, but you spoke about like, y- you want to get into doing triathlons, right? Yes. <laughs> I should not. I should say that more enthusiastically. Right? I know, like, yes, like... I'm doing triathlons this year. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm a little nervous, but I am excited. Um, I'm doing a training program that starts in 20 days. Mm-hmm. Um, so I will be like officially training. I've been doing some stuff, but <laughs> Some stuff. <laughs> um, I am not. You know what? I am a swimmer. I'm not going to keep saying that. I am a swimmer. Yes, that's right. I took so many good swim lessons while I was in Playa del Carmen. Um, but th- yes, these races will be my first time swimming in open water. So I'm a little nervous about that. Mm-hmm. Everything else I'm not too concerned about. It's really the swim part, which I would imagine is a thing for a lot of folks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, so yeah, I'm excited. It'll be really good. Right. When, what, um, triathlon? So I'm planning to do three. <laughs> I'm planning oh, to do, right. they're sprints. So sprints, shorter versions. Um, mm-hmm. I'm doing the women's whisper try in Long Island, um, which is a sprint. I don't remember the exact distances, but the swim is in a pool. So I'm like, that I got. I got that. <laughs> yeah, you got that. You got that. <laughs> um, because I'm I'm not too worried about the the cycling and the running part. I'm really just concerned about the swim. So my first one's gonna be in a pool, and then I'm doing the Wyckoff Franklin Link Wyckoff Franklin Lakes try, which is early June, also or mid June, and then the New Jersey State Triathlon. So. Those are my three main races and it'll be great. I'm like, I've, I'm letting go of the fear. It'll be great. It's going to be fun. It will. It will. I yeah. have all the faith in you. You got this. Thank you. Do you have other races happening? Or like, what, what are your plans? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, no, actually I don't just the marathon and hopefully yeah, that's it. No, no other races. I, now I interviewed Derricka, um, the president of Major Taylor nice. Cycling Club, and she recently completed um, an Ironman, her second Ironman. So we were talking about um, just doing, getting into the world of triathlons, and I'm like, dang, this seems so fun. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to swim. I am supposed to be learning how to swim. But um, one day, I think I will try a, a triathlon, you know, dip my toe in, into it. Yes, do it. You should You should just do, I mean, I, I can be extra sometimes. I'm like, yeah, just do the one that's in like three weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, but actually, okay, I am doing a fun one. I'll send you the info, but one that's pretty short. Um, and it's in a pool. And I feel like that, like you could just walk across the pool, <laughs> you know, it's literally five laps in a pool. <laughs> but I think that's a thing. Like we're also taught that things are hard, like harder than they need. Right. To be. 
Right. And we build up these barriers in our head around how hard something is. And I think that was definitely me with thinking about triathlon training. Mm -hmm. But then it was like, okay, if I break this down into the steps, like I can learn how to swim. I can take some lessons. I've done that. I'm like, okay, I I can swim. (laughs) Can I swim in open water yet? No, but <laughs> I <I'm gonna laughs> learned that too. <laughs> like I got, I got some time. I got two months. Like I don't know if that's enough time, but like I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna find out. Um. So I think like a lot of a lot of all of this stuff is just like letting go of the fear and allowing yes. yourself to, or not even just letting it go, but like you can still have fear, but just do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, And like, do it in a way that feels safe and feels manageable. Like, even when I was saying about travel, like, I'm going to solo travel and you're really scared, find a destination that feels safe where you have like some level of protection. That's me with this triathlon in the pool. Like, I can, I know that I can make it across the pool. (laughs) And that, (laughs) that feels like some, some level of comfort. You got this. Thank like you. I said, I have all the faith in the world in you. I can't wait to see the pictures with you holding up your medal. Like, I did it. Thank you. <laughs> I I can't wait either. <laughs> like, no, it'll happen. I feel, I feel like I can make it happen. Yeah, you definitely can. You Thank definitely you. will. I will. Thank you. Yes. You should really do it. Like, you, all you got to do is get some swim lessons and you'll be good. I, I will think about it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I can, I can do a, a duathlon, which is running and cycling. I'm not a runner, but I can train for that. Um, but I will definitely take swimming lessons. I've just been I'm procrastinating and I guess a little bit of the fear because when I was younger, I got pushed in the pool and almost drowned. And it's like, yes. I guess, you know, that, that small little fears there yeah so many of us have fears around swimming it's so real Mm -hmm. it's so so real um but I think it also just feels so empowering to be able to swim yes yes Mm -hmm. safe in water and it's like that's not like our ancestors were in water they could swim like we Mm -hmm. just like built this fear around it and we're like so Mm -hmm. separated from water and like access to learning Mm -hmm. how to swim Yep. So it does feel like a little bit of a reclamation to be able to to swim. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I just that feeling of when I finally was like, oh, I can jump into open water and feel safe. Mm. Um, like I, I got I'm at that point now and, and it feels really good. So I just I highly recommend. Yeah, that's what's up. I'm not gonna lie. I, I fake like I can swim. So I'll get in the pool and like move my arms and I'm walking like I'm not <laughs> like you said mm-hmm. walking across the water yep splashing the water on my face like oh I did something I'm like no I just stood up but I I am definitely going to um make it a point to take some lessons spend the money take some lessons learn how to swim do a triathlon get my medal and retire <laughs> That's fair. That's, <laughs> listen, I don't know if I'm going to keep doing triathlons after this year. We'll see. But it was a goal that I set for myself. So I'm making it happen. Uh, that's what's up. Um, before we wrap up, just have a couple more questions. Yes. What does wellness look like to you? And why is it important for Black women? Yes. Wellness for me, I think, looks like balance. And prioritizing the things that I know make me well, (laughs) which is Mm -hmm. like very, I'm learning is very different than just like doing the things that make me happy sometimes. Um, So that's been an interesting learning. I think for me, wellness is like, how do I create the right level of discipline for myself and boundaries like for myself and for other people so that I can sleep and drink Mm. enough water and eat the right food um and I think for me more recently I think maybe like earlier as I was like focusing on my own personal wellness a lot of what I was focusing on was my relationships with other people and how Mm. I create like healthy relationships and healthy boundaries and healthy friendships and have the right community support and care. And I think that's a really big one that a lot of Black women we start with because we're so used to like 
needing to support everyone else and not prioritizing ourselves and like needing to to just work less. Um, and so I think that that's a lot of where my wellness journey started. And I think it's really important for us as Black women to start with like really managing the, the well-being of the relationships and community we have. Mm-hmm. And I think the place that I'm at now is I love the community that I have around me. I feel like I have such like beautiful friendships and like relationships with my family. Um, and now I'm like, okay, how do I have the level of discipline with myself to like take my own well-being and health to the next level? And so that's why I'm sitting here talking about triathlon. <laughs> it's a level of discipline um and like that's the part where I'm like oh this is not easy Mm -hmm. um and I'm I'm also I mentioned I am teaching cycling and I think doing those things that add this level of like accountability to my well-being um has been so helpful for me but so eye-opening into the habits that I had that I'm like now letting go of, like for me to be able to train for a triathlon and to teach cycling, like I need to go to sleep. I need to be mm-hmm. in bed by 10 PM every night. Mm-hmm. I need to drink. Like I don't quite drink a gallon of water a day, but like I need to drink a certain level of water. I need to eat and like actually track the macros that I'm eating to be able to like sustain myself. And these are things that like contribute to to my well-being to anyone's well-being but I'm just now building the discipline and having accountability to that level of discipline for the first time and that has felt really different for me so that's where I'm at now on my wellness journey around and, and that doesn't necessarily mean that's how or like what it should look like for anyone else but mm-hmm. I think um I'm thinking about well-being as like how do I cultivate the discipline to do the things that I know are going to make me healthy and happy and rested? Um, And sometimes that means also like sacrificing the things that don't serve me, like Mm -hmm. working crazy long hours or having relationships with people that drain my energy. Like I've had to let go of a lot of things to make space for these things that are holding me accountable to being the best version and like most well version of myself. So it has not been easy. I'm like, my phone is like a distraction that I'm trying to let go of. Me too. Um, <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm like trying to like put my phone down by 9 p.m. But also it's like my phone isn't as lit anymore because I set all these. Have you seen those memes <laughs> where it's like when you protected your piece too much and now you're going to try. Um, so yeah, like so much of my life has changed as I focus on like setting boundaries and, and really like knowing what's best for me, but it's been worth it. And I feel like I'm so much happier and healthier now that I've like allowed that level of discipline sticking to my own boundaries. Yeah, that's what's up. I, I'm with you on the, the phone. I'm trying to, um, keep my phone on my TV stand instead of on my nightstand, mm-hmm. trying to, you know, cut it off at a certain point. Like, all right, I'm not looking at my phone after 10 p.m. But when I do have my phone, I'm just scrolling, scrolling. And I, there's no purpose. Sometimes it's, I'm just scrolling. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we do. It's like, yes, but it's also like, how do we, it's so hard <laughs> to like keep yourself accountable to certain things. Like I've literally been putting my phone outside of my room by my front mm. door from 9 p.m. until I get out of bed which helps but it's hard we all want like breaks like our brain (laughs) is great so it can be hard to to actually do that stuff but I'm finding it to be so helpful yeah it, it definitely is I put my phone down and pick up a book I started I'm I quote quote unquote I'm not a reader right but I started challenging myself to start reading these books like all right Tasia I have all these books in in my room let me start reading some of them and then I'm like all right let me finish them okay I finished because I would I would read and then I would stop but mm-hmm. I made a point to read and finish I was like oh okay this wasn't so bad now let me get another book 
Now I'm yeah. going to bookstores. Now I'm like, I'm ordering books online. <laughs> like, and that's the thing. It's like when you create those boundaries, like the boundary around your phone, you then create more space to do other things that you yes. wouldn't have otherwise gotten to do, like reading. Or like we think that we don't have time to do certain things. But if you actually like think about what you could let go of and how you're using your time, it becomes way more possible. Yeah. I'm happy Definitely for you doing your book. <laughs> Thank you. That's so good. <laughs> I am. I try to be a reader. I have my Goodreads account. I have a list oh, of books. Yo, follow me. <laughs> okay, I'll find you on Goodreads. I love Goodreads. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm going to try to read three books as my goal on this 10-day cruise. Which oh, I think I okay. Happen. Yeah, nice. Oh. So that's where I'm at. Nice. Um, lastly, so you're a cycle instructor. What? <laughs> How'd you get into that? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So I teach at Harlem cycle. Um, so a lot of people don't know this, but I started, well, first of all, I used to work in gyms and studios when I was in college and I love mm. being in that environment. Mm -hmm. Um, also felt like it was good accountability <laughs> for staying healthy and exercising. So I first, yeah, that was my first experiences in college. And then after college, I really wanted to still have that experience to be able to work in those environments. And so when I was finishing college, I got certified as a group fitness instructor. Um, I taught for a while. After college, I was teaching these like boot camp and like Pilates classes um, after college. But the class that I would take the most was cycling. I always loved to, I, cycling and yoga um, were probably mm -hmm. the classes that I would take the most. And so I'd been wanting to start teaching cycling for the longest, but I just, I don't know, it just didn't work. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I was always like, oh, do I have the time? How do I make this happen? I don't know. Um, and then last year I decided to go for it. And so I started teaching at Harlem Cycle and it's been great. Um, I love teaching like it's such good energy um I love also creating class environments where like people you don't have to be an expert you don't have mm -hmm. to have ever taken a cycling class before like it's really classes that anyone can take um it's just like a commitment to doing something for yourself that day and to getting a little bit healthier so yeah I love teaching it's been so fun that's dope uh that is dope I've taken one class and I was like I don't know if I can do this again. <laughs> do you think that is easier or harder than cycling outside? To me, definitely harder. To me, definitely Interesting. harder. Yeah, definitely harder. I was like, what? I, I, I'm not going to lie. I walked in there a little cocky, like, oh, I cycle outside. I've mm -hmm. done a century. I got it. I was like, what is going on? <laughs> That's so funny you say that because I just went for a ride outside and I was like, wait, I was like the opposite from me. I was like, oh, I got this. Like, I'm going to go on these hills. Like, I do this like five times a week. And this one hill took me out. Like, it really <laughs> took me out. I think part of that is because I'm just not shifting my gears properly. But that's that's a side note. <laughs> It's so funny. It's like the, I mean, the, I think the power in your, like your cardio fitness and like your mm -hmm. leg power translates a little bit, but it is a very different experience. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, I would give it another try, but at what I went inside, I, I didn't know really what to expect. And I was just like, what? <laughs> I it's just kept looking though. at my friend. I was, and yes, it was, it was, it was fun. And my, um, someone from college was the instructor so he was teaching and I was like what I was just looking at him like what what <laughs> what is this I wasn't prepared for this it was fun though the music the, I like the whole vibe of it but just the the cycling itself I was just like oh this is something that's real it's something I yeah I guess everyone also like whatever you get used to because I I think Yes, it can be harder, but when I'm outside, I'm like, I have to go up this hill versus <laughs> like, inside on a bike. I can turn the resistance knob down a little bit, you know, <laughs> like I can slow down. There's none, there's none of that outside. So I find it harder, but it's like also what you're used to. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. Maybe one day I'll come to one of your classes. Yes, come to I'll... one of my classes. Um, they're they're so fun, and I love the playlist <clears throat> part. So I try to I try to have good music for all my classes. Nice. Okay. Cool. That's what's up. Thank you so much for being a guest. Of um, course. Are there any parting words? Any parting words? No, just like go out and live your best life. Like, don't, I think that the thing of this conversation is like, you can be, you can have fear, but these things that scare you, like can really open your mind to what's possible. And you can do things even if you are scared or if you've never done them before. And there's ways that you can take steps and make it a little bit easier. So I just hope that all y'all who are listening do that. And it can be in like a small way or a big way, but just find the things that make you feel like you're expanding your life and your mind um, and introducing yourself to new experiences that you haven't had before. That's what's up. That's right. You know, I bungee jump scared. I was, I was fearful, but I did it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. And we're going to do these triathlons. That's scared, right. Exactly. But we're going to do it. Exactly. Right. Just get it done. Do it scared. Just do exactly. it. Just do it. Where can the people find you? You can find me on Instagram at Tasia.ebony. And if you are interested in retreats or other events that I have happening, you can go to my website, which is Zoya, Z-O-Y-A wellness.com. You can also find all of that on Instagram too. So I'm excited to connect with y'all. Thank you so much for having me as a guest. Of course. Yeah, we got to connect um, once you get back from your trip and um, yeah, go for a ride. Yes. I would love that. All right. This is the Rolling With Tay podcast. I'm your host, Tasia, a.k.a. Tay, and thanks for listening.